You know without a doubt, I appreciate you stopping by. And to prove it, I will not waste your time. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Tuesday. It is August 20th. Now, what I like to do on this show is to introduce you to a hot penny stock that I find through the day as I'm trading penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find everywhere. They're on every single market. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. Now, normally when I'm looking for a hot penny stock, I'm going through the charts. Relatively easy. You can see heat in a chart because you're not reading anything. You're just looking for patterns. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I take the time to rummage around through the press releases and the filings of that company looking for some hot information. If you can find some hot news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to bring to you on a regular basis, including today. We are taking a look now at ticker XTIA. This is XTI Aerospace. I did find this one by looking at the charts today. Normally when I'm looking for hot penny stocks, I'm on the four hour charts. The four hour chart isn't that impressive. It isn't bad, but it isn't impressive. The one hour chart, that's a whole different story. She's looking very hot. She is an atypical breakout chart ready to break out right now. And she's got a lot of things going on right now. First off, XTIA is coming out of a big merger. Last year, she entered into a merger with Impixian. That was the company on the market. The two closed that deal March 13th and XTIA took over. Now, that doesn't mean that Impixian's out of business, they quit or left. No, it was a merger. We have two businesses now. XTIA works with vertical takeoff and landings. It's those planes that acts like a helicopter and acts like a plane. They are in development for that project. And then you have Impixian, which works with factories and facilities with logistics and helping them to locate things. That business is still operating as well. So XTIA, she finished the day a little over 22 and a half cents and she was up almost 7% today. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ. Penny stocks on the major exchange come with benefits compared to those on the OTC. First off, there's no transaction fees. You can trade your stock for free. Doesn't matter how many times you buy or sell, you'll never pay anything for it. You can trade pre-market, after-market. Lots of big money-making opportunities in these periods of time, folks. And you can never take advantage of them with OTC stocks. Plus, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange. If you're going to be trading a stock, don't you want people who have money and don't you want volume? And don't you want a lot of rules? There's a lot more rules up on the major exchange that these companies all have to abide by. That's good for me and you. That helps our investments stay safe. So let's get some information now about XTIA and Impixian. And the best place to get that information is from the most current press release. They tell us here that XTI Aerospace is the parent company of XTI Aircraft Company an aviation business based near Denver, Colorado, currently developing the all-electric TriFan 600. You just saw the video on it. A fixed-wing business aircraft designed to have the vertical takeoff and landing capability of a helicopter, but be able to fly at speeds of up to 345 miles per hour with a range of, get this, up to 700 miles on a single charge. That's like twice as good as our cars. They are trying to create an entirely new category of vertical lift crossover airplane. They want it to be point to point, as convenient as can be, going from your driveway to Walmart's and then back to your driveway. Can you imagine that? Additionally, the Inpixian business unit of XTI Aerospace is a leader in real-time location systems technology with customers all around the world who use the company's location intelligence solutions in factories and other industrial facilities to help optimize operations, increase productivity, and enhance safety. So there are two businesses here. We've got XTI Aerospace in development. They're going to be needing money. They're going to be needing investors, and they are coming in. But in the meantime, they've got a company here making money in Pixian. 
they've got products, they've got services, they've got customers from around the world. They've been servicing for quite a while. So this is a real nice diversification we've got going on here. Now, as I said, this was one of the most recent news presses, came out August 14th. This was actually a business update. They brought this out along with their Q2 financials, and this is a lot easier than going through all the different pieces of news. So they tell us here, in the second quarter, the company and AVX Aircraft Company, a leader in advanced vertical lift solutions, announced the signing of an LOI, a letter of intent, and are currently progressing towards a definitive agreement, whereby AVX's experienced engineers will provide design, development, and certification services to the company, reducing overall commercialization costs and potentially accelerating the timeline to first flight. From what I was reading, their timeline, they aren't considering this to be done until the end of 2025. So we do have a ways to go before this plane gets on the market. But that's not to say we don't have interest. They've already got people ordering this in advance. Also in the second quarter, XTI Aerospace announced conditional pre-orders for 100 TriFan 600 aircraft from Mesa Air Group. Assuming the order is fully exercised, it would represent approximately $1 billion of revenue. Well, there's something to look forward to. Additionally, the company executed a capital distribution agreement, they're getting financing, with FC Imperial Limited for a proposed strategic equity investment of up to $55 million in the front door with a post-money valuation of about $275 million. This following one year's worth of negotiations and due diligence. So this took a long time to get to. Money is coming in to help them with their product development. So we know that is moving forward. So let's take a look at the news now. I have only gone back here to the end of May because that's as far as they allow me to go here. There is a lot more news. You can go back and get it, but this suffices for what we're looking at. Now, we've got another piece of news here that I almost forgot about. Duh. XTI Aerospace provides an update on former subsidiary spinoff distribution and proposed business combination with Damon Motors. When they were doing the merger with Impixion, they had another merger going on as well. There was a subsidiary called Graffiti that is merging with Damon Motors. They make these big electric motorcycles. The two companies were coming together and they're spinning them out onto the NASDAQ. Well, you had to have your shares bought and paid for by a certain day in December of last year. I was there. I did it. I qualified. I should be getting a dividend. Should. Here it is, September, right? Or August, and I still don't have my dividends. This is a lot like HNRC. HNRC had a spin out of WDHI. It wasn't until a year later you finally got the shares, but they were unregistered. They were restricted shares, worthless for all practical purposes because WDHI was not yet on the market. Well, that's the same thing here. They haven't finished the merger. They're not on the market. I haven't got my dividends. And even if I do get them, they're going to be restricted and unregistered. So I can't do anything with them until they get on the market. Yes, I am in trading for the long ride. So sooner or later, they'd become good. But gee whiz, why do they take so long to do this stuff? Then here at the beginning of June, the company signed that letter of intent with AVX Aircraft. Also at the beginning of June, the company announced the Mesa Airline conditional pre-order of 100 TriFan 600s. Then we've got some fresh news here halfway through June. The company files new U.S. patent application on innovations and submits a global PCT patent application for the TriFan 600. So they are protecting their property. They've got to get patents out there so nobody copies what they're doing. And there's a lot of innovation out there right now. There's a lot of different companies making these sort of helicopter planes and they all use different type of technologies. Then we see about that investment that came at the beginning of July. The company signed a capital distribution agreement for proposed investment of up to $55 million at a $275 million valuation. And then, of course, we've got our business update where we got all of our information. 
And a quick peek without having to do a lot of homework, their recent financials, they tell us that they did just a little over $1 million. All right, so now that you know what's going on with the company, let's go take a look at some basic information on the stock. Looking at the relative volume for XTIA, it's up, uh, gee whiz, it's like tripled, right? She went from 1.1 million shares, which has been her daily average over the last 30 days, to over 3.5 million today. That's a nice increase. Share structure for XTIA. Oh, we've got a nice outstanding share count of 11.5 million. I don't have any clue what the float is, I don't know what the insiders own, so I can't even calculate it. What I do know is that the float is never higher than the outstanding share count. So we aren't going to be more than 11.5 million. And a legitimate low float starts at 10 million. Close enough. And when you figure the insiders probably own something, we probably are at 10 or less million shares on our float. So we've got ourselves an excellent float here. Market cap for the company. We're just cresting two and a half million dollars. Financials. Well, this is a bit awkward. Okay, <laughs> you'll see why. All right, we are looking at the last four years of financials here for the company, keeping in mind that the merger closed March. So up till March of this year, it was pretty much just in Pixian. Then this company came into the picture. So four years ago, we were at $9.2 million dollars. We know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Bump that up to almost 16 million, then lost 10 million in 2022, dropping down to six and then dropped down some more to 4.5 million at the end of 2023. Though we did get to keep a little over 3 million of that. That is a big decrease in revenues there. Looking at our quarterlies, well, what's going on? We got nothing here in the first quarter of 2023. Then it jumps to 2 million, carries over to the third quarter of 2 million, last quarter minus 2.6 million from the get-go. They didn't even generate any positive revenue. And then the first quarter of 2024, $220,000. Wow. Wow. And they did make some profit out of that. More than 50%. They got $141,000. And that was the last quarterly report as the company was alone. You just saw what they made Q2. Just over a million dollars. So they've just increased their revenues fivefold. Yeah, they're way down from where they were, but they're coming back now. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company. Don't forget those three zeros. They work over here as well. This is what I like to call the bank, cash and cash equivalents, about 1.8 million. Total assets, nice number, 31 million. Total liabilities is less, so that's a nice number. Little over 17 million, which means we do have positive stockholder equity here of just about 13 and a half million. So that isn't bad. We're making a little bit of money, a little bit of profit, and we have some stockholder equity. So we're not holding a bag. That's the bottom line here. Looking at those disclosures for the company. Ooh, we got an 8K that came out a week ago. This probably maybe has to do with the quarterly report. Uh, yes, you normally have an 8K that comes out with the 10K or 10Q. It is the financial, but there's a lot less information in it. It's a little easier to read. If you wanna know about the company, don't go through all the news. Don't go running over to Google searching. I mean, you can do that. You'll find your stuff, but that's a lot of work. Just jump into a financial. Get used to reading those 10Ks and 10Qs. Use your search bar. Put in the date, 2024, and you'll get all the current information. Otherwise, you can learn every single thing about the company just by looking into their financials. All right, let's take a look at these other two 8Ks here. These did come out a week ago. This one here, ah, oh, looks like a brochure. XTI just came out with a digital brochure. This will give you a whole bunch of information about the company. I didn't even know this was here. So you got that going on. And then the other 8K here came out on the 6th. 
This one is unregistered sale of equities and securities. Unregistered. All right, I'm not too sure what this is about. I'd have to dive into this. It doesn't look too major. Looks like about a half a million dollars worth of shares is being sold. About a million of them, I guess, from what I can see glancing at it. So it's not a bad company. They've got a portion of the company that is making money in Pixian. Then you've got XTIA, which has got a very novel technology that they've got pre-orders for, but we're looking at over a year before it gets onto the market and anything can happen in that amount of time. But I'm looking at the chart right now. I'm looking at that hourly breakout and I'm looking at what we got going on. Is there enough good news here to get that chart running now? Down the road, maybe something great happens. Maybe something horrible happens. I'm concerned about the next 72 hours. I think she's going to move. Let's go take a look at that chart. As far as I'm concerned, it's all about the charts. So we're going to chart XTIA now on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We got her opened up to a six month, four hour view, and that's actually good enough because it's everything. Remember, they just closed this merger March 13th and the company that came in got a new ticker. When you get a new ticker, you get a new chart. So this was the very first day on the market for her, March 13th. She came on at roughly $3 a share, had a great first day. She ripped really fast up to seven bucks and then dropped really fast all the way back down and kept falling down to about a buck 70 here. Then she popped hard and strong up to over $5, came back down. We had one last pop before she went into this tailspin and it was down here around June. She started slowing down. I'm not saying she quit falling. I'm just saying she wasn't falling as fast. Now, as you can see, we've got lots of S and R's on the board, supports and resistances, all these horizontal yellow lines. These are the rungs that the price is going to use to climb up, but these are what I'm going to use. So I know when to get in and out of a play. One line is a support and resistance. When you're on top of the line, it's a support. And that's normally when you want to get in because she's going to start climbing to the next one. When she gets up to here and starts bumping her head, she's hitting a resistance. This is when you would normally sell before she comes down. Now, I'm not saying she can't get over it. I'm just saying most people sell underneath the SNRs. Most people get in on the top. So I got a bunch of them here. We've got one clear up here at 87, 65, 58, 50, 38, 30, 26, and 23. Now, as I said, the four hour chart isn't all that exciting. We've got a downtrend going on with our 200. The price has quit falling. It hit a low bubble here, not falling anymore. It's now going sideways. And if you look, she's making headways doing that. She was underneath every single SMA hitting that low bubble. Now she's only going sideways, bumping her head up against this resistance over and over again. But look, she's crossed over the 20, she's crossed over the 200 hall, and now she has positioned herself on top of the 50. She's made a change of trend. She is now on top of all of the SMAs with lots of volume coming in today with the 200 a long ways away, but she's in the right position. Looking at our oscillators, they're weak but they're all starting to change now. You can see that everything is slowly starting to come up. But as I said, this wasn't the chart that actually caught my attention. It was the 20 day, one hour chart. That is an atypical breakout chart, folks. When you've got your 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious, price deep underneath it, doing the same thing. Then they start to close in on each other. The 200 starts to level off, which it's just starting to do now starts to go flat. When it goes flat, that's when the price can get on top. Think of this as a hill with ice on it. If it tries to jump up here and stand up, it's going to slip and fall and probably fall further down than where she started. But if she waits till it levels off, she can jump up there, make a breakout, come back down, jump on it, make sure it's nice and strong so she can build on it and then she'll continue to climb. And that's what we've got going on right now. She got on top of her 200 haul. She is bouncing all over this purple blue line here, the 200 haul, my favorite SMA, because it's the price's favorite SMA. The reason? 
The 200 Hall and the 200 MA are cousins. Both of them take 200 days of prices and average them together. But the 200 MA just minds its own business, where the 200 Hall pays attention to current prices and changes its line accordingly. So you end up with two very strong, powerful lines on the chart, but the 200 Hall can relate to the price, so the price can relate to the 200 Hall. And what you'll see is that they work in harmony together. When the price is between the 200 and the 200 Hall, it will normally bounce off of the 200 Hall and launch to the 200 MA and through it. I look for this play over and over again. And we definitely have a launch here. She busted through the 200 once, came down, bounced off the 20, had a big jump. Boy, that went from uh, 21 cents up to about 25 cents, breaking a resistance here of 23, came back down to the 20. She's fully respecting that 20 right now as it's getting ready to cross the 200. That'll be a golden cross. That'll give us more power. She is riding her nine day SMA easily. You can see the corners of the bars are sitting on top of that. She's not moving too fast. She's moving nice and steady. All of our SMAs have turned up now and are about ready to cross that 200. Again, giving us more strength. Oscillators, our PPO, percentage price oscillator is climbing just like our MACD. These two are cousins. The PPO uses a percentage of the price while the MACD uses the full price. And our RSI, it's warm. It's up there at 61, pretty much just going sideways right now. Let's jump on down to our five day, five minute. So here's our 200. That's the first thing I like to look at when I get to my charts. Where's the 200 and how is the price relating to it? Well, it's all over it. Above it, below it. Above it, below it. So really, it's hanging around the 200. And our bounces were big, medium size, smaller, and then boom, we got a launch right here. And if you look close, folks, you can see that our 200 was going flat right in this vicinity. She's falling right here. Right here, she actually went flat right there, pre-market. That is when this took a jump from 20 cents to 22 cents. Came back down, did a crouch before the pounce. What a cat does, goes down just a couple inches to jump way the heck up there. That's all it did. Got on top of the 200, crouched and pounced, and she launched herself, bringing all the SMAs with her. Every single SMA now is climbing uphill on top of the 200, 200 now is curved. Price is sitting on top of the nine, not too far away from anything, approaching this resistance of 23 with the next one up there at 27. Oscillators, our PPO is climbing. Our MACD is climbing. RSI is a little cool. It says it's actually drooping right now, but we got a green bar up there. I'm not worried about that. I like the chart, folks. I like that one hour chart. The one hour chart shows me a lot of strength. Once she got through that 200, we had this huge bar coming back down and then a climb. There was our flag wave. I'm going to start climbing, come back down, went right to work. I like XTIA. I'm not looking at it down the road. I'm not thinking about this spin out. All I'm thinking about is what's going on right now. They do have profit. They do have revenues. The revenues are growing. They are in business. They've got hot products that are going to be coming. I mean, it's all good. It's not super hot. It's not super fresh, but it's enough to get the stock moving, in my opinion. Time will tell. <laughs> but go do some more due diligence. It never hurts to know, right? The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.